How do you add a gradient to text in Adobe XD? Is it possible? Yes, but there is a trick to it, and I'll show you how in this video. I'm starting out with an artboard sized 1920 by 1080 pixels. Tap T on your keyboard to bring up the text tool, click and start typing something out. Choose whatever font you want. I'm playing around with a few different options here, but I ended up settling with Futura Bold. Now we have our text, but what if we want to add a gradient to it? Well, if you click into the fill under the appearance panel, you'll notice that there's only the option to change the color of the fill. At this time, Adobe XD doesn't offer support to add gradients to text because it's a live element. Instead, what we need to do is turn this text into individual shapes. To do that, you can go to the toolbar, select Object, Path, and Convert to Path, or use keyboard shortcut Command-8 on a Mac. Basically, this took our editable text and turned it into a path, a shape, with multiple anchor points that you see here that you can modify and change. If you were creating a logo and you wanted to modify the type, this is how you would go about doing that. You'll notice it changed from text to path one here in the layers panel. With this selected, we can now go and click on the fill and notice that we see a lot more options available now. If you click on the caret here next to solid color, you'll see that we now have the option for linear gradient, radial gradient, and angular gradient. Whereas before, when we just had this as text, we didn't have this option. We could only change the color. So from here, you can play around and choose whichever type of gradient you want. I'm gonna start with a linear gradient. You'll notice there are these circles on the gradient. One is a starting point for the first color of the gradient, and the second is the end point. Click on the first end point and change the color. Then click on the end point and change that color. If you know an exact color you want to use, you could paste in the hex code, but I'm just playing around with the color picker. You can also drag around these endpoints on the actual gradient and change the direction or the size of the gradient. Obviously, the farther the two points span across an element, the more gradual the gradient will be, whereas the closer the two points are, the more abrupt or obvious the gradient will be. If you hover over the line, you'll notice that there's a little plus sign here, and that's how you can add another color to your gradient. Again, you can slide this color around and change the location on the actual gradient. If you prefer, you can also add another color in this little slider above the color picker. Click to add another step in the gradient and then change the color. From this slider, you can also change the location of the other colors of the gradient. If you change your mind and want to delete one of those colors, just click on it and press delete. So here's where you can really just play around with gradients and achieve the result you want. Explore your options. For my design, I'm going to use a vertical gradient, so I'm going to change my endpoints to be vertically on top of each other. I'm also going to remove that intermediate color in the gradient because I just want it to be two colors going from a purple to a blue. Okay, now the first step of my design is done. Now I'm going to make a copy of this grouped path. I am pressing option on my keyboard as I drag this path, then it creates a copy. I want this copy to overlap slightly, kind of like a drop shadow effect. In the appearance panel, I'm going to uncheck the fill and check the box to add a stroke. I changed the color from the default gray to a blue here. I also adjusted the size of the border and increased it to two pixels. Now, in order to see this text effect better, let's change the background. To do this, click on where the file name here is that says gradient, which is what I named my artboard, and that selects the entire artboard. Go over to fill and adjust it. I'm changing it to black. Now it feels like the colors are blending in a little bit too much. So I'm going in and selecting that outline and changing it from blue to magenta. 
And let's play around with adding that fill back in to see how that could create a cool effect. I decided to keep the same colors of the gradient, but instead adjust the opacity so that it has this transparent look to it. I'll zoom in here so you can really get a sense of the effect I'm talking about. You can see there's a faint transparent layer of the color, almost like a glass effect. If you want, you can go into the fill and play around more with the transparency. You can actually change the transparency of each individual color points of the gradient. It doesn't have to apply to the overall gradient. So click on one of the color circles and adjust the opacity, and then click on the other one to change it because maybe you want them to be different. I played around with this, but I ended up keeping both points of my gradient at 50% transparency. A key note here is to remember that this is now a shape. So if you double click, you see all of these anchor points. This means you can no longer edit the text. So if you change your mind and you want to change what the text says, you would have to recreate this whole thing over again, which is why I usually recommend creating a copy of your text before you outline it. That way you don't have to start over completely from scratch. As a last step here, let's experiment more with the background. I'm curious what it would look like on a gradient background. So let's click on the fill and change it to a linear gradient. You can play around with your color choices here, but I ended up going with the same exact colors that I have in the gradient text, but reversing the gradient so that you can actually see contrast. If I use the same gradient in the same direction, then the text would just blend into the background. But by reversing it, we're able to see it well. Let's experiment more by duplicating this artboard, pressing Option on your keyboard and dragging the artboard down to create a copy. And I'm going to change the background on this one just to create another option. This time I'm changing that first color of the gradient to black and leaving the end point as a dark purple. I think the darker contrasting color behind the brighter text gradient helps bring it out more and it's more legible. And because we lost that first version, I'm going to copy the artboard again and just change the gradient to a solid black color fill so we can compare the three different design options. And these are the final three effects. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Notice how changing the background really helps bring out the contrast more. This is something you'll want to keep in mind, especially if legibility is key. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might want to check out some of the other ones I've created. I'll leave a link down below in the description to a few more or check out one of these on screen.